We'll be doing a review of chapter five today. Chapter five is data modeling, which is 11% of the certified data management fundamentals exam. So it is one of the most important and kind of information packed chapters. So I'm glad we get the chance to work on it as a group today. But just a quick overview. So we're going to do three what are called Pomodoro sessions. So this is a period of deep work, which will last about 20 minutes, and then a period of discussion, which will last about 10 minutes. I will screen share the timer so you don't have to worry about keeping track of time. But yeah, hopefully this is a good chance for you to get some reading done. And then if you have questions about the content that you just reviewed, then we can discuss that as a group. So good luck with your reading, everybody, and I'll catch up with you in 17 minutes. So I was just thinking maybe it would be helpful to talk a little bit about my understanding of this field. So data modeling is much more in the weeds compared to data architecture, which is in the CDMP study group. That's the chapter that we were reading last month in March. So for data modeling, it's much more tactical. It's much more like, okay, data architecture is give us the broad overview of all the data that we have access to in the enterprise Data modeling is how do we organize it so that it makes sense and we can then stuff it appropriately into the storage systems. I'll just give you guys a quick preview of our guided study session that we have coming up at the end of the month. The idea of data modeling is it's taking unstructured information and then progressing through this specified workflow where you start with a conceptual model and then move to a logical model and then move to a physical model. This is kind of what a conceptual model could look like. It's typically sort of a concept map, or it could look like a glossary where you're just identifying the kind of nouns. They're formally called entities with their relationships. So these are the kind of verbs, if we go back to the analogy of parts of sentence. So this is step one in data modeling. And then you proceed to the logical model. You know, it's the second part of this process. It is sort of the bridge between just laying everything out roughly for the first time and then where we're heading, which is more technical. So at this stage, you want to capture more detailed data requirements. And the processes to do that are listed out here, but I don't want to go too much into detail. I want to give folks a chance to get to their questions. The final step in this process is creating what's called a physical model. And so this is highly technical. It outlines how the data will actually be stored in the various data storage systems within the organization. So not only that, but it also articulates the data type and any kind of constraints for each specific feature in the data set. That's just a little introduction, a little preview for you guys. If you become members of Data Strategy Pros, we'll go through the whole slide deck for an hour at the end of the month and walk through all the vocab and things. Anyway, I hope that you'll be able to join for that session as well. But in the meantime, what questions do you guys have so far? So, Nicole, from your experience on the CDMP exam, what are the main concepts or topics we should know on data modeling? Yeah, it's tough because it's such a lengthy chapter. There's a lot here. There's two sections, basically. There's the first section, which talks about the data modeling process, the conceptual, logical, and physical models. And then there's a yeah. second section, which talks a lot more about the schemas and then how relationships can be represented in different ways. And it's really hard to say because you could expect to have anywhere between 10 and 12 questions on the data management fundamentals exam on this chapter. That doesn't really help to say, oh, well, you should know everything because 12 questions is a lot. It could span the entire chapter pretty much. Sorry, that's not very helpful. But I think that's, <laughs> no. I think that is the correct answer is you just have to be comfortable with knowing a lot of it. Okay. Okay. Can you briefly explain to us the concept of schemas? I understood very well the concept of the different models, the conceptual model, the logical model, and then the physical model. But on schemas, specifically the object-oriented, mm -hmm. I'm having a hard time understanding that. So to answer your question, at a high level, there are six different schemas that are discussed in the data management body of knowledge. Yes. So there's relational, which is about business rules. This is sort of the entities and the relations that we talked about earlier. It really focuses on that mapping. 
There's dimensional, which is more focused on paths to answer questions. And object-oriented, what it says is it represents classes, attributes, and operations. So that's the objective. That's the organizing mentality behind that specific schema. There's also fact-based. It sees the world in terms of objects. And then facts are relating to or characterizing those objects. And then the last two are time-based, which is very straightforward to understand. This is if you have things that occur with chronological characteristics, for example, operational data about the uptime or the performance of a specific machines in a warehouse over time. And then no SQL, which is... Yeah, it's kind of misleading because it's saying that all table-based models are SQL, but NoSQL is just sort of your grab bag of non-tabular structured schemas. So it could be any kind of schema-less way to represent data. So that could be documents, key value store, column-based stores, or a graph database, which is pretty magical. Yeah, sometimes it's just useful to hear the concepts in other ways, in other words. I personally think this is the most complicated chapter in the DMBOK. Thank you, Nicole. That was a very good explanation. Okay, so when we talk about data modeling, the first thing that crosses our mind is relational modeling, like talking about how we manage our database, you know, entity types and all that. But let's take it to another level. When we have to manage unstructured data, like XML, What is the best form of modeling to use to manage such schemas? Yeah, it depends. I think NoSQL is a natural fit for XML. Yeah, it is in and of itself a kind of schema, right? Okay, so I will share my screen again, and then I'll chat with you guys in about 16 and a half minutes. folks. So other questions from the reading this session? How did that go? Yes, I'm still trying to wrap my head around the no SQL relationship with entities. Okay, so in the case of XML, you said the best approach is to use a no SQL modeling. I think so. uh, Okay, so going through the reading now, I saw something about links and edges. That's the graph databases. Okay, but, but it still mentioned no, no SQL. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the umbrella term. And then there's different kinds of no SQL databases. So you could have document stores. The famous one is called MongoDB. Not sure if that helps at all, but that's the one that I have been taught. And then that's a document data store. You know how if you look at Excel, It's a table. It's shaped like a rectangle. And the data is in rows and columns. But in a NoSQL database, it's literally anything else. So one example of this is the documents that I mentioned, or it could be XML, it could be graph database, which is the nodes and edges that you brought up, key value store. I don't know if that helps or if that just brings up more vocabulary. No, 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 that that helps. That helps. So I'm still trying to put a structure around it, if you get what I'm saying. XML is just raw tags, or I mean, I don't know what to... It's called a markup language. A markup language. So it's language. like, it's semi-structured, mm-hmm. right? Right, right. So how do you establish a relationship between one semi-structured language to the other? You probably want to look at document storage, like MongoDB might be a good implementation of this. I'm not sure if you're working with any tools right now, but learning that one might help you get a sense of one possible way to go about this. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. I just Googled XML database and there's a lot of options. There's a whole Wikipedia page that came up. This is a known challenge that folks are dealing with. As a data strategist, I feel like I know a lot about a lot, but I'm not an expert on any one particular thing. I'm certainly not an XML expert. So your mileage may vary. 
I was going to say one thing to do if you have a particular concept and you feel like you're reading about it, but it's not sinking in. You could always just to see what else is out there. Because what the DM Bach is trying to do is it's trying to collect best practices and create a body of knowledge. So it's trying yeah. to be the authoritative source of truth. But just because they explain something in a certain way doesn't mean it's the only way to explain it or it's even the best way to explain it. So I just found some examples for different database schemas. So like the progression from logical to physical. And then they talk about the NoSQL. So they're again referencing MongoDB. That's probably the most famous and most successful document storage database. SQL is the most famous and most successful relational database. And by relational, I mean, it forms that table. So it's sort of a misleading name, honestly. But it seems to me like graphs are more focused on relationships. So it seems like no SQL databases, they're more evocative of the relationships in the data rather than if we just open up a new Excel file, just this rectangle of information doesn't really show us very much inherently about the relationships. But yet this rectangle is what's called relational databases. I guess what they really mean is the star schema where you have multiple tables like this. This is more like chapter 11 when you get into data warehousing. But this is where it starts to feel like, okay, maybe this is kind of showing you the relationship. But still, it's not as evocative as a graph. I think graph databases are so magical. And there's all kinds of really cool properties that can be represented with graph databases. They're just really awesome and powerful. Social networks are very clearly represented. They heavily use graph databases. But yeah, I would just say like, oh, if you're learning a concept, try to learn it from different sources as well. Yeah. But anyway, it is still helpful to see how other resources represent the info. Okay. And thanks a lot. Yeah. And Nicole, this is yeah. maybe a higher level questions, like it's more practical. Mm -hmm. uh, what area usually takes care of this data modeling from your experience? From my experience, I have seen it that in some projects, it's been taken care by the uh, architecture area, but I don't know if you have seen uh, any different or. Yeah, that's what I hear too. When data modeling is advertised as a job, they usually call it data architecture. And the DM Bach, it's kind of arbitrary. They split off data architecture as yeah. its own high level fields. It's chapter four, but really they go hand in hand and it's probably the same team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That... The bulk of the work is in the data modeling. That's why it's 11% of the questions on the exam. And it's just a lot more technical and implementation focused. So that's the job that I would associate with this type of work okay. as well. And Yeah. And could you share some questions that you have seen about this particular uh, section on the exam? I would like to know what is the granularity of the knowledge that we should have. What is the, the amount of detail that they ask on the CDMP exam? Yeah, that's a good question. It's somewhat granular. I mean, they could test you about anything in this chapter. Is it like 40 pages? It's a fairly long chapter, which makes it kind of challenging. So you'll get a mix, right? So you'll get some that are high level, or goal oriented, and these might be covered in the introductions or the motivations section of the chapter. And then there's the activities section, which covers the progression from the conceptual, logical, physical. So just make sure you understand that. That's more straightforward. It would be disappointing to miss a question on the difference between those three stages. Yes. It should be pretty simple. And then the more complex aspects of the chapter are around the schemas and the relationships and the vocabulary about cardinality, entities, different types of keys. So there's a lot to know. All right, sample question. Depending on the database technology or data modeling tool and whether the entities involved have mutual dependencies. When a relationship is defined between two entities, which of the following may be created implicitly? And your options are A, an attribute, B, an identifier, C, a foreign key, D, a data model, or E, a simple key. I'll go for a foreign key. If <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that one as well. I agree with Anthony. 
Okay, so that's correct. Obviously, this is a question about the section on keys. It's essentially vocabulary that fall into the keys category. So good job, guys. You got it right. <laughs> but that's an example. It's going to okay. be a lot of conceptual and vocab questions. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay, so I, I bought my first set of exam questions. I have another one to buy. Is it still 50 questions in the other sections? Yes, each one is 50 new questions. Okay. So first of all, you should know that when you purchase the data management fundamentals exam from Dama, they'll give mm. you practice questions, but they're not very good, honestly. And then we have practice questions on our website for data strategy professionals. And I don't know, hopefully they're good. Anthony, you can speak to your experience, but I tried to make them really good and have an explanation for each question in the answer section and a page number so that you can go and look it up in the book. Yes, it's been very helpful. I can't wait to buy the second section. Thank you. I appreciate that. And there's a package of questions for each chapter of the... No, I didn't do it that way. A lot of people have asked me for that. I did them as mixed practice. Okay. Because when you see it on the exam, you'll get mixed questions. So I wanted to make it reflective of real world conditions. Okay, okay, okay. But there are different packages that you can buy. Yeah, so there's sets of 50, and each set is a different 50 questions. If you bought all three sets, you get 150 different questions. Okay, I see. The time limit for the exam now, do you think it's sufficient? I mean, after going through these past questions, do you feel one is positioned to finish the exams before the time runs out? Yeah, well, it's impossible for me to say without knowing like how well you did on the question sets or how long it took you. Another thing to know is there's an English as a second language version of the exam. So that could be relevant for you guys. And it gives you 20 extra minutes to take the test. So that's awesome. That's definitely something that you should do. Yeah, so it's 100 questions and you have an hour and a half or an hour and 50 minutes if you do the ESL. And I had probably eight minutes at the end. And I had flagged when you're going through the exam, there's a flag feature that you can use. And then you can at any point go back and review the questions that you flagged. So I did that. I had eight minutes at the end, which was enough time, I think, to look at at all the flagged questions and then just try to explore whether I could find a better answer for them than the one that I just quickly assigned. So I had to go quickly, but I didn't feel like I ran out of time. I think I had enough time. Okay. And you just had eight minutes left by the time you got to the end of your questions. I mean, you just had eight minutes extra. Something like that. Uh, Yeah. That's not much. No, it's not much. And are the questions, uh, there are different kinds of questions, I imagine. Are there also multiple? when you have to select more than one question that it's right? They're all choose the best answer out of five. Oh, all are choose the best answer out of five. Okay. Correct. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's good. It's not... Simple. Yeah. Okay. We can all do some more reading and then come back together. <laughs> it's always fun to hang out and chat about how the data management body of knowledge represents these complex topics. They do a good job. It's tough. When are we meeting again? We do this every month on the 15th day of the month. So I'm really happy you guys could come and hopefully you can come next month. Anytime. Thank you so much, Nicole. Absolutely. Thanks for coming with such good questions. I hope it progressed your data strategy knowledge. It did. It did. I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice day.